sliding up into the slice. Welcome back to the Far Northwest Workshop. Welcome back to the Far Northwest Workshop. I'm Matthew. I am going to do from beginning to end an unboxing. <laughs> and uh, you saw these uh, cute little garden carts over at Harbor Freight. Hey, I saw them too. I bought three of them. <laughs> No, this is not a sponsored video. I wish it was a sponsored video. I want to get like one of those, uh, like a, a full blown work vehicle. You know, it's a Harbor Freight truck, like, like snap on. <laughs> yeah, I know there's not that many moving parts. Uh, there's seemingly a simple uh, little contraption. There are nuances to uh, how this is assembled and the uh, proper, um, it's not, as easy as it looks. I had to do it three times just to figure it out because their one page instruction manual is not wicked helpful. What does that say about me? Why, who, ugh. Oh, Jesus. There are many uh, 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 reasons to own one of the uh, aforementioned garden carts. It's a freaking garden cart. <laughs> you know, you put things on it, you pull it around by a handle. It moves, it rolls, it uh, does the laundry for you. <laughs> in this case, firewood. I am not packing that action around in my arms. I'm not gonna do it. Uh, this saves me time, and time is money to a guy like me. So, uh, enjoy. <laughs> Roll away. <laughs> They put all the nuts, bolts, washers, and what have you into this tiny little package, so nothing bouncing around inside your box. Well did. Well did, Harper Freight. Hey! Shooting a video over here. All right, so um, here we are with the uh, tiny little instruction uh, manual in uh, all of its one-page glory. Uh, the first thing you want to do is um, take the instruction manual and um, just go ahead and, and, you know, crumble it into a random manner like this and, uh, you know, toss it. So, for this little, uh, for your little nut package here, nut package, uh, here's the tools that you're going to need for these. <clears throat> Get yourself a 3 8 drive, half inch socket, 18 mil socket. Grab yourself a half inch wrench if uh, you must, kind of makes things a little bit easier to, you know, hold things in place while you ratchet down the other side. And, uh, oh yeah, don't forget your 12 mil because, you know, having uh, SAE and metric in, in one uh, nut and bolt package, that's like, you know, super convenient. Don't ask. This little trailer, uh, the way that they have the studs laid out on the frame, there really isn't a front and a back. So uh, the uh, the frame of the axles themselves, other than one being the steering uh, frame, they're they're pretty much exactly the same. So set of studs here and here. There you go. And one will go on the other side as well. Ha! Didn't even drop one. You have uh, your small washers here. They're just flat washers. Place one on each of the studs. Then your small nuts. <laughs> Not mine, yours. You won't need a lock washer on those uh, studs because these have nylon inserts on the inside. Focus. They have nylon inserts in there. In effect, a lock washer in itself. Hey, you try to do this with one hand and film at the same time. Jesus. 
I do this all for my audience here. Everything I do, I do it for you. Who sang that song? Who was that? that was, I remember that was like the, <laughs> the end song in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves with uh, Kevin Costner. You know when they made that movie? They tried to voice coach him to have an English accent. You know, because, come on, Robin Hood was English. He had an English accent. But they had such a hard time on trying to voice coach him. They said, you know what? She, you're just, you're not getting it. You keep on going Australian. Just, you know, scratch it, scrap it. Don't, don't even, don't even bother. Look, we have Kevin Costner doing a Robin Hood movie in the 90s. Kevin Costner's hot right now. That's what's putting butts in seats. So just, let's just, let's just roll with it. People will get over it. And they did. That's a great movie. I don't give it, I don't care what you say. So those studs, uh, you know, those studs are welded onto the frame. So there's really nothing to hold down. Either grab your uh, your half inch socket, three eighths drive, and uh, give those a couple turns. Now here's one of the nuances that they don't mention that they don't mention in the instruction manual. Do not ratchet them down tight yet. You're going to need a little bit of movement in these for them to mount up to the support brace that will help support these frames to the center of the bed frame. That's what these studs are for right here. Your package came with uh, three flat bars. One flat bar that's completely straight. You don't need that one yet. You have two flat bars that have a angle broke into the metal and a hole on either side. There is no front, back, bottom, top, center, aft, starboard. None of that noise to these. They're both the same. Right there. And you will... There we go. That's why you don't want to tighten these down because these frame bars right here, they might be pitched one way or the other. And if you tighten them down, your frame will be slanting to one side. You won't be able to tweak it over and get this onto the stud there. So don't tighten those down yet. Leave them slightly loose, just enough to hold the frame on so you can pop your brace in. Uh, you're not gonna bother putting, you're not gonna bother putting that one in and connected these here yet because this will be your steering axle, also the front of your little uh, garden wagon thingy. So this one does have a threaded stud. We'll go ahead and get that one mounted on now. Go back to your nuts. Grab one of your nuts. Come on, nuts. You know what? Dump them out. All right. Here we go. Grab yourself a washer and one of your small nuts. <laughs> Half inch drive. Now you can tighten these down. As long as we're getting our uh, braces put on, we can go ahead and put this on too. The yoke assembly is what allows us to steer this silly thing. Swivel those noisemakers backwards. Flat bar goes like yay. Short side of the yoke will go on this post here. Like so. Nuts, bolts, and washers. You may have noticed that in your package that there are four that are pre-assembled, at least they should be. Three of those, you may have noticed, are exactly the same length with one slightly longer. That slightly longer one, set that one aside for a moment, and we'll use the three that are exactly the same. Uh, something I should have mentioned at the beginning of this video. If you never worked with a nylon inserted nut before, that's going to be the top of the nut right there. That's where that 12 mil comes in. 12 mil fits perfectly on the hex heads of these bolts. Now, that would be silly if I just continue to go through like that. Yes, I'm sure some of you noticed. Why doesn't he just take that off and use his half inch wrench? 
All right, genius, calm down. I'm going to do it, all right? Just do everything you want to do. Now, if you've gone ahead and tightened these three down, uh, you, you shouldn't have done that. You shouldn't have tightened these down all the way. You want to leave these a little loose. The reason being, these nifty little nylon inserted nuts allows this nut to seize itself in place without having to be ratcheted against its uh, marrying surface. So you don't have to go all the way down the shaft. You can leave it loose. This will not back out and it'll allow the play necessary for these cross members to articulate so we can steer this wagon. So I'll loosen these up a little bit. There we go, that's what we wanna see. Now, that one that was seemingly the same, but then you came to realize was slightly longer than the last three you just put in. This one's gonna be going through three pieces of flat steel. That's why it's a little bit longer. Maybe unnecessary because the other ones were plenty long, but it's nice to know you're there. Come up through our cross member, through the uh, axle frame, and through the yoke. You should have left your axle a little loose so that you can get things in place. Now again, it's not necessary to lock these down tight. This stud actually has a small hole drilled right through it. That's what this is for. Flat washer, lock pin, cotter pin. They go by many names, but actually just one name. It's a cotter pin, okay? Drop your washer on. Slip your pin through. And then you can use either a pair of pliers, but my hands are super rough and manly, so I'll just use my bare fingers and roll those back. This will prevent this bottom plate from your yoke from being able to slide off. Way back when in human history, somewhere, somehow, sliced bread was the greatest invention. But before that, yep, let's put those on. When you're dropping these wheels on here, you'll notice that there appears to be two sides. Well. There's your valve for pumping this thing full of air. Naturally, that would be going on the outside. You know, kind of like a car. Slide those on. Now it's time to use those funny looking nuts that appears to be a bowler cap. Yeah, these are uh, called acorn nuts and that's what's going to be holding our wheels on to our shafts. Flat washer goes on first, followed by your lock washer capped with the acorn. It's an 18 millimeter socket. Ah, you could use your ratchet, sure. Well, that's no fun. Let's get the handle on that yoke so we can drive this thing around or pull it around or tug it around or you know put things on it and pull it with our hand <laughs> on the bottom of the handle here you'll notice that there's a couple of holes I, I don't know why there's a couple of holes there you really only need one hole you should only have a couple things left in that little package this thing that i was just uh, pointing at you aggressively with um, this is a thing made of plastic goes on the handle the end of the handle, the south end of the handle. The part that attaches to the cart, part of the handle, yeah. Oh, and one of these right here. Here's that 12 mil again. We're gonna need some air. There should be numbers on the side, guidelines by which to live with a tire. These guidelines, suggest 30 pounds maximum i would do at least 31 or just 30 just just do 30. Just, just, yeah just do what it tells you 30. Woo! 
42. That's what we want. All right, there it is, Harbor Freight Garden Cart, brought to you by For Our Northwest. I am my own sponsor. I sponsor me in all my own videos. <laughs> How generous. <laughs> Thank you so much once again for joining me here at the For Our Northwest Workshop. I'm Matthew. As always, you can get it done. I hope I can help. Now, provision me. <laughs> With a bit of your attention as I nostalgically stoke these flames. <laughs> yeah, somebody's gonna sponsor that guy real quick. <laughs> Soon.